We have any beer tonight under the age of 30? Any Gen Z got any in here tonight? I just wondered. No, the reason I ask, that is, I see some finger pointing going on. That's all right. That is the dumbest group of humans I've ever met in my life. Oh. <laughs> They're not dumb academically. I'll get to that, but whoo. They are soft emotionally, I can tell you that. The reason I say that, when I was growing up, our parents let us play in the street, climb trees, and blow stuff up. You know what happened if you were hurt or maimed? You got a new nickname. I grew up with two friends of mine, Amer and Niner. When Amer was six, he was in the garage with his big brothers blowing stuff up. He lost his right eye. It was closed the rest of his life. He looked like he was aiming a gun. That's how he got the name Amer. He was the Amer. Everybody called him Amer. I did not know his name was not Amer. Till the first day of third grade, the teacher said, Ross Thomas. We all went, Ross, Tom who? Amer, is your name Ross? We started laughing. That sounded funner to us than Amer did. And Amer says to the teacher, no, everybody calls me Amer. My mom is the only one that calls me Ross. And she goes, well, Amer, how'd you get that name? He goes. <laughs> you imagine now a kid even pretending to point a gun at a teacher. It'd be a helicopter above the school. In the, in, in the fourth grade, my friend Niner, myself and, and Niner and two other boys were all out in the woods. We're all climbing trees together and each one of us up about 15 feet and he fell. And on the way down, he was trying to grab branches. And by the time he hit the ground, he lost most of his ring finger. <laughs> Still funny to me. It was almost 58 years ago I tell the story. I can still picture I was in the tree watching him because he got up and he was dusting himself off. He's going, I'm bleeding somewhere. I cut myself. I cut myself. I cut myself. <laughs> My other friend said, look at your hand. And he screamed and he ran home. <laughs> we all climbed down and followed him, but none of us thought to look for his finger. <laughs> about four days later, he's back in class. His hands all heavily bandaged up. We're in the fourth grade. We're learning about decimal points for the first time in our life. He raises his hand. He says, I have 9.2 fingers. <laughs> Called him Niner from that day forward. In high school, every sport he played, coach gave him number nine. I wish I was making that up. <laughs> when I was growing up, everybody had nicknames. We all had nicknames, and they were given to you by your friends, usually about your least flattering body part. I had friends I grew up with paunch, tater head, needs, chin. Chin didn't have one. We originally called him Viola because we knew he'd never play one. <laughs> it's okay, it was 50 years ago, relax. I had another friend named Mongo because at the same time he had mono and gonorrhea. That was a college friend, that wasn't a grade school friend. That was a, <laughs> was a college buddy. I had another friend in high school, he had a short right arm. It was fully functional, but it was a short right arm. It was about half the size of his left arm. So he had a big hand, little hand, we called him Clock. <laughs> Everybody called him Clock, the teachers called him Clock. <laughs> clock was awesome. He was in my second period algebra class and every day at 9 a.m. we were supposed to be in our seats when the bell rang, but Clock would wait out in the hall. Every single day, he'd wait for that bell to ring and then he'd burst through the door like this. It was never not funny. <laughs> Every day we anticipate that moment and then laugh for 10 minutes. One day we're sitting in class and the bell rings and he doesn't burst through the door. We're like, oh, where's clock? He must be absent. But he wasn't, he was tardy. 10 minutes later, he burst through that door. <laughs> we laughed until 9.30. He was the best student in class. He was the best algebra student. And every Friday, we had to compete against him. The teacher would put problems on the board, and we had to race him, and we called it Beat the Clock. <laughs> the teacher came up with that one. <laughs> Nobody could beat the clock either. He had that chalk in his left hand, and the eraser in that short right arm. <laughs> he was undefeated all semester. One time in PE, this is after PE, we're in the locker room, we're changing. We had two new kids in school. They were cousins, they were bullies, and they were making fun of Clock, they were bullying him. And he was in the locker room with, uh oh, he was that short right arm, and he goes, I'm gonna knock you out with this hand. And he goes, boom, and hits him with a left. 
knocks the kid out, just drops him to the ground. And then he turns to the other boy, he goes, or this one. <laughs> but when he hit that kid, we all hooted and hollered, right? So the teacher came out of his office, what's going on out here? What's all the noise about? We go, well, these guys were just picking on, on clock. He just knocked one of them out. By then, this kid's starting to wake up, right? So the teacher walks over, he goes, <laughs> you just got knocked out by a kid with a half an arm. Hope you learn to keep your mouth shut. <laughs> and he looks at all of us. He goes, looks like the clock just struck one. <laughs> he turns to the other boy and he goes, I don't care if he strikes two. <laughs> that was the end of it. Walked back in his office. Nobody got in trouble.